Okay, it appears that it's doing the job now. Okay, we'll see. Good. So uh, we are asked to do everything as before, study everything, graph it. Uh, these functions um, require a lot of work and a lot of time. Any trig function. So let's start. At least we are given just one full uh, rotation, so there is nothing. We don't have to find all solutions, so that, at least that. And that is a good option. And the second derivative. Good. So let's, our first step is to find everything about the function. And I will plug in 0. How much is cosine 0? Uh, cosine 0 is 1, and this is 1. So 2 plus 1 is 3. Perfect. The same thing for 2 pi, same number. So 2 plus 1 is 3. OK, that's good. Um, and now I would like to find uh, the x-intercepts. So to find the x-intercepts, how do we find the x-intercepts? What do we have to do? For any function, how do we find the x-intercepts? Let's say Mickey, how do we find the x-intercepts? Very good, awesome. So then I have two cosine theta plus cosine squared equals zero. And of course I have to factor out cosine x, uh, cosine theta of course. And then two plus cosine theta. And what are the options? Let's say Josh, what are the options now? That cosine theta is and cosine theta is. Excellent. So, 0 and negative 2. So, where is cosine 0? Lindsay or Sarah, I haven't heard from you. Kush, Oscar. Where is cosine 0? Excellent. But not enough. Very good. Awesome. So pi over 2. So make sure that I divvy up into four quadrants. So this is pi over 2. I'm going to put in pi here and 3 pi over 2. So you already told me at 0 here and 0 here. Good. And now what are the solutions here? Kush, what are the solutions for cosine theta equals negative 2? Kush, are you with us? 1, 2, 3. Okay, he's not. Anyone else? Trey, what are the solutions for cosine theta equals negative 2? Trey, are you with us? Anyone? Gabriel? Of course not, because it's impossible. What is the minimum possible value for cosine? Yeah. Minimum possible value for cosine. Good. What is the maximum possible value for cosine? One. That's it. Done. Very good. So that was a tricky question. Sorry. So now f prime is negative 2 sine theta 
plus 2 cosine theta times negative sine theta. So one more time, 2 cosine prime is 2, negative 2 sine, cosine squared, bring 2 in front, subtract 1 from the power, differentiate the inner function. So now when we set this equal to 0, I will already factor out uh, negative 2 sine theta, and I have 1 plus cosine theta equals 0. Of course, this can go away when it comes to solutions. And then we have sine theta equals 0, or cosine theta equals negative 1. So where is sine theta 0? Anyone? Zero. Yes, theta equals 0 and pi. Good. Okay, where is cosine negative 1? Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. And cosine theta equals negative 1 is where? Anyone? Is it at pi? Of course, thank you very much. So I don't have to write anything else. Good, so that's good, it's nice. I'm going to use pi over 2 to study the sign here. I'm going to use 3 pi over 2 to study the sign here of the derivative. So f prime, I'm going to write it one more time. Negative 2 sine theta, 1 plus cosine theta. So when I plug in pi over 2, this is 0. Uh, um, this is 0, this is 1. So I get negative 2. When I plug in pi, 3 pi over 2, this is 0. This is negative 1, so this will be 2. Um, I didn't need anything else but the sign, I'm sorry. I don't need any number in there. Don't put any numbers because that's the, other than the zeros. I got carried away and I put the 2 in negative 2, but there is no need to do that. Just a sign. We only need the sign. But I need to determine the function value here, though. So at uh, pi, where is my function? Right here. So uh, this is uh, negative 1, and this is 1, so negative 2 plus 1, negative 1. At this moment, I make sure that these two work well together. If they don't, I have to start from scratch. From 3 to 0, yes, it goes down, yes, it's supported by the sign. From 0 to negative 1, yes, it goes down, and that's supported, yes. From negative 1 to 0, yes, it's increasing, yes, correct. From 0 to 3, yes, it's increasing, that's correct. Good, done so far. Can anyone tell us what uh, is pi comma negative 1? What type of point is pi comma negative 1? That's it. And um, now let's look at the second derivative. Where is the first derivative? Okay. So I'm going to start here with this first derivative, not with the product. So I'm going to copy it one more time just to have it here in front of me. Negative 2 sine theta plus, uh, minus 2 sine theta cosine theta. Okay, so the second derivative, uh, this is negative 2 cosine theta. And this is negative 2 because now I have to use the product rule. Sine prime is cosine times cosine and then plus sine 
but this prime is negative um, sine, so this would be negative sine squared theta. Because I have cosine and cosine squared, I'm going to change this into 1 minus cosine squared theta. So the second derivative then becomes negative 2 cosine theta. So negative 2 um, cosine squared, and let me, it's better to distribute here so everyone can see what I'm doing, and cosine squared theta. So finally, I have the second derivative as negative 2 cosine theta. Cosine squared plus cosine squared is 2 with minus in front, minus 4 cosine squared, and then plus 2. Okay, which is kind of messy. So I'm going to factor on negative 2. So 2 cosine squared theta plus cosine squared and minus 1. I'm hoping that we can factor this. Can anyone try the factor form for us? Because then I have to find um, the solutions of this equation. And then come back and, and finish up my table with the concavity and potential inflection points. Can we factor this? Is it 2 cosine squared uh, minus 1 and cosine squared plus 1? Is that correct? 2 plus 1 minus, yep. So then we have, I, I meant without the power. It's just 2 cosine, of course. No reason to put any power there. Uh, so then we have cosine theta equals one half and cosine theta equals negative one. Where is cosine uh, one half on the unit circle? In which quadrants? Uh, first and second. Uh, cosine. First and fourth. Good. So where is cosine one half? And it's not the smaller angle. It's the other one. So cosine theta equals one half means theta equals pi over three. And the other one is two pi minus pi over three. 2 pi minus pi over 3, which is 5 pi over 3. Let's take a moment and put those in first. Uh, here's pi over 3 and 0. And 5 pi over 3 is here in the fourth quadrant and 0. Now finally I have cosine theta equals negative 1. And where is cosine negative 1? Very good. Ah. Okay, so now I need to sign 1, 2, 3, 4. I'll plug in 0. When I plug in uh, 0, cosine is 1. Cosine is 1. So this is positive, this is positive, but is a negative outside. I'm going to plug in pi over 2. Pi over 2. With pi over 2, this is 0, and this is 0, so this is negative 1 and it's positive. So it does not hold water, it does hold water. With 3 pi over 2. With 3 pi over 2, I get 0, uh, or maybe this is even better. 0, 0, positive. 0, 0, so with pi over 2, 0, 0, uh, positive, yeah. With 3 pi over 2, 0, yep. 
and with 2 pi, uh, this is 0, negative. So holding water does not. Yes, I need this number here, and I need this number here. So in the original function, who knows where the original function, oh, it's right here under my nose. I have to plug in pi over 3 and get this number, and 5 pi over 3 and get that number. And lazy people get a calculator, like me. So I have 2 cosine theta, and then plus cosine, um, let me put this in parentheses. So insert a parenthesis, cosine x, close, close, and power 2. So I think I have this correct. And I want to punch in, um, make sure the mode is in radian. And I want to punch in pi over 3. So pi divided by 3 and see what happens. And 5 uh, pi divided by 3 and see what happens. OK, I got 1.25 for both of them. Nice. So this is 1.25 and 1.25. Okay, so what type of point is pi over 3, 1.25? Since this, yes, because the, the, the second derivative changes sign, so this is an IP. And what type of point is uh, pi comma negative 1? It cannot be an inflection point. The second derivative does not change sign, and this is already established as a minimum, local minimum. What type of point is 5 pi over 3, comma 1.25? Yes, it's an inflection point. The function changes concavity from opening up to opening down. It was not that as bad as I expected, so let's graph. So the top is 3, OK, and the local minimum will be negative 1. OK, so I will say pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, and 2 pi. Good. So from 0, 3, And let me also put all the other points. So 0, 3 is there. Pi over 3, 1.25. Pi over 3, somewhere here, 60 degrees. Um, pi over 2 is here. Pi negative 1. Um, 3 pi over 2 is 0. Um, 5 pi over 3, which is closer to here, yes, 1.25 and 2 pi comma 3. Okay, so opening down, decreasing to the first point of inflection. Changes concavity, crossing at uh, pi over 2, 0. Continue to open up decreasing uh, to the local minimum of pi negative 1. Uh, still opening up till increase, uh, an increasing crossing at 3 pi over 2, 0. Continuing to 5 pi over 3, still opening up where it has an inflection point. It continues to increase to 3, opening down. Any questions on this? So my video worked, but I don't know if it, it caught this part uh, uh, visual, but it hurt, it hurt me doing it. So opening down to the inflection point, changing concavity, crossing, coming to the local, and also absolute for this interval. This is also the absolute. And um, continuing to open up till the inflection point, crossing at 3 pi over 2 inflection point and going to 2 pi comma 3. Okay, the 